So if you did manage to get your project working on your real or virtual device, great. Uh, we've been staring at this thing that says Apache Cordova the whole time. Well, what are we actually looking at? Let's explore what we're looking at because you might see one of my instructions here, uh, number, number three, edit your code here. I didn't even mention it last time. And let's see what I'm talking about. Go to your project folder. You can minimize everything. I didn't close it. Just minimize and go back to the safety of Windows Explorer. And go back to where your project is at. Test 2. Mine's on the desktop. Yours might be on your flash drive, whatever. But it's probably on the desktop. Your whole project is that folder. And right now, if I take a quick look at the properties, it's about 32 megabytes. So my whole project is 32 megabytes, even though I haven't really done anything. That's because it's got a lot of stuff behind the scenes to make it work. Well, open up test 2, and we're going to look in detail later at this file called config XML. Let's take a quick look at this. Right click, edit with Notepad++. If you simply do a double click, you don't get all the majesty of Notepad++. So you want to right-click the config XML file Notepad++, and we'll spend time exploring this file. This is a very important file that dictates many aspects of your app. Right now it's 26 lines long, and we'll go through all of these lines, what they really, really mean. But you see things that pop out that say, for example, um, platform Android, platform iOS. See it on line 19 and line 22? Here, we're writing code that affects how our app behaves on Android, how our app behaves on iOS. If we also wanted to target uh, Windows Phone, uh, we can add that code, or most likely we would do Cordova Platform Add Windows. But this is an XML file, which looks very familiar, very similar to HTML, doesn't it? I see platform tag slash platform. I see widget slash widget. I see pairs like description slash description. And I see some self-closing tags like content, that doesn't have a pair. Allow intent, that doesn't have a pair. But this is XML, basically. Whereas HTML is a language that has been defined. All the tags that, that work exist. There's the P tag, the image tag, they're, they're all defined. XML is sort of like invent your own tags make up your own tag and have those tags do something. So XML, extensible markup language. It's a markup language that we can extend it beyond its basic capabilities. And so the Cordova team invented basically the tag content, allow intent, author description. These are invented tags, but then they do something based on what software uses them. So Cordova then takes that tag and does something with it. It does uh, Android-specific commands, iOS-specific commands. It does something about what's this access origin. We'll learn what it is. But this config file controls our project, all of the details behind the scenes. And later on, we'll edit it because we want to put in our own description and author, and we want to uh, change other features and allow the access of other capabilities. So I'm just going to gloss over it, but this config file, I have a handout for us that'll much more explain it. Um, so uh, I'm going to minimize that. And then we've got hooks folder, platforms folder, plugins, and www. All of our plugins live in the plugins folder. Something called hooks that we'll get to later gives us extra features. Platforms. Open up platforms for a moment. All of the Android specific code exists there. All of the browser specific code exists there. All of the iOS specific code would have its own folder. All of the Windows phone code would have its own folder. So all of the specific code is in here. So I'm gonna Go back. Where is this folder? Uh, it's your test 2 folder. Mine's on the desktop. Let's go back and let's look at this www folder. 
index.html, that sounds familiar. CSS, that sounds familiar. JS, JavaScript, images. This is a complete website. And this is our project then, Cordova, when we do Cordova build, it takes everything that's in this folder and then writes the appropriate code and puts it into the Android folder, the iOS folder, etc. So let's right-click that index file. Edit with Notepad. And look at that. HTML tag, head tag, body tag, div tags, p tags. We saw this. So that Android project is this. Where it says Apache Cordova. Can you figure out where can I change that to say, hello, sir? Anything else? Where can we change that? What line number? Forty. Forty. Apache Cordova. It's a plain old H1 tag. Let's do that. Line forty. Make it say anything else you want. Welcome. Save it. Our workflow is about to change. We're no longer going to go to save run Firefox. Doesn't make sense. It's an app now. Our workflow now is we're going to make changes to the HTML code, the JavaScript code, the CSS code, make sure we save it all, and we go back to our command prompt, Cordova emulate Android, Cordova run Android. And then it will compile the code, take that HTML, write the appropriate Android specific code, the appropriate iOS specific code, process it, and launch it on the device with our changes. Welcome. So you save the index.html and is there another step? Yes. You make sure you save it and then you go back to the command prompt Cordova emulate Android. Run Android will put it on my real device. We'll put it on my virtual device. Remember, on yours, we have to do that extra ADB step. Question. Do you, do you have a an emulate a virtual device? We're going to do the break in a moment, but you, you want to create a virtual device like we had in the instructions. So it says, welcome, device is ready. If I want that to say something else, device is ready, well, on line 43, I see something that says device is ready. Ready to rock. So it's going to be it's going to be familiar but different. We're still going to edit HTML code, but now we have this extra step of uh, checking the de checking the the project in the device, um, which might take a while. We have to do that whole run Android or emulate Android or ADB. Well, we also can do. Cordova, remember we've got Cord Cordova run browser. This might be a faster way to see your results. It's going to open it up in the web browser instead of waiting to get it onto your device. You can try that. Estella, try that. Try Cordova run browser. See if it pops up in your web browser.
And so here uh, we're going to spend time to uh, understand this uh, template file and the JavaScript and all of that. But usually what I do on day two, because we've got a, a whole month for part two, usually what I do on part two, that as far as I go on part two, is just to make sure that we get a little more acclimated with the command prompt and that we set up our devices and that I give you this tip of the iceberg that we're going to start to work inside of this www folder. You can explore that on your own. We will, we will look at all of this and I'll explain what these lines mean and such. But what I want to do is I'm going to put a couple more PDFs in the in the um, uh, in the network folder, if you want to look ahead, and um, we're gonna we're gonna end the the day today actually, because I feel once we've got all of this basic foundation, we can get up and running a lot faster. I want to make sure that we're comfortable using the command prompt, that we've got our devices set up, that we've got the emulator or real device, and that sort of thing. So we're gonna end a little early, uh, have some lab time the rest of the day make sure it all works. I'm going to give you these extra handouts if you want to start exploring over the weekend. When we come back together we will we will look at this. We did. We have. No. That's going to take more effort. But that's why I'm going to give a handout here. That handout will let you look at it. <clears throat> so in the network folder, I have a couple more uh, instructions here that you can look at. I'll turn the printer back on. Cordova number five, workflow one, and Cordova number six, workflow two. So um, we're going to end the main lecture at this point to have some little bit, little bit of expended lab time. We usually don't end this early. We do go much further, but for day two, this is where I want to end to just make sure we're all on equal footing. Question? Yes. So any other general questions about today? 